Today's scripture reading is from the book of Mark. It's chapter 8, verses 31 to 38. Hear the word of the Lord. Then Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. Jesus said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. So please pray with me. So, Father, who is going to come in glory, illumine your, your word today and open our minds and our hearts so that we can receive what it is that you want us to know. Amen. So, we're in the book of Mark, and at this point, Jesus has been healing people physically and spiritually. He's fed people miraculously. And Peter has confessed that Jesus is the Messiah. So things are going pretty well. And then Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering. Peter hears suffering, rejected, killed. He knows how the powers that be in his time kill people. It's, they use crucifixion. And from ancient times, this was the, the, the most terrible punishment of torture and humiliation. And Peter's like, no way. Yet, Jesus rebukes Peter's refusal. Maybe the disciple thought this was going to be easier. I mean... It wasn't that easy when they had to go out in twos to preach repentance and Jesus told them to pack nothing. But they could have had a clue when Jesus denied his own family and said to the disciples that those who do God's will are my brother and my sister and my mother. When Jesus says to them, if anyone would be my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me, maybe Peter's afraid that following Jesus is going to mean great suffering for him too. Well, this scripture uh, has a fond place in my heart because I remember when my kids were in school and they took the Bible as literature. And this was one of the passages that was connected to a very um, Kind of famous expression that we use in our culture today and that is my cross to bear so if you have a cross to bear it means basically that you have some sort of responsibility or some difficult situation that you have to tolerate you know people say we all have our crosses to bear when they're just talking about the burdens in life that we have to deal with and it's actually defined in this wide way everything from anguish or ordeal to just a hassle or unhappiness. And um, it's, it's like our culture has kind of trivialized this, this story in Scripture. And we've also trivialized just the whole idea of self-denial. Um, we use self-denial to mean uh, not allowing myself to enjoy something that I want. And if you look up the definition of self-denial, the, the sentence that they use to illustrate what it means is, on this diet, I don't feel like I'm denying myself. The Bible is not literature. And this is not at all what Jesus means. Jesus uses the Greek term 
pasho, from which we get passion, means suffering. And suffering is what Peter and most of us fear more than anything else, both for ourselves and for those we love. And we do a whole lot to avoid it. I know that I uh, run into, in my hospice work, uh, a real reluctance for people to deal openly with their suffering. A lot of people cope using denial or they just refuse to talk about suffering, mortality, and death. And these people that are on hospice. So it, it, um, I think it kind of helps us understand that there's this basic anxiety among most of us that if I have to see you dealing with your suffering, it causes me to suffer too. And, and that's, um, you know, that's why some people in these difficult situations will come up with these expressions that don't seem to fit well. It's like, oh, it'll be okay. Oh, everything's going to be fine. Why do we, why do we avoid this, this type of connection that we actually can have? Because mortality and suffering um, can connect us. There's, um, there's a deep human solidarity that can come about in intimacy when we share our suffering. Well, I, I love Richard Rohr and I quote him often, and he said that real solidarity needs to be felt and suffered. That's the meaning of the word suffering, to allow someone else's pain to influence us in a real way. Now, we don't always want to do that. Uh, today, is the last day of Black History Month. And uh, I know that, you know, we here at Grace have um, over, over the years explored many ways to, to um, better understand the suffering of our black brothers and sisters um, who lament both long ago and very current painful uh, events. So we've read books, we've uh, discussed racial literacy, and um, you'd, you'd say, well, why? Well, one of the things we confess as Christians in our brief statement of faith is that in a broken and fearful world, the Spirit gives us courage to do many things, one of which is to hear the voices of people's long silence. There are many voices today that are long silence that are demanding to be heard. This is a moment where these voices are finding a microphone and they want to share the suffering in their experiences. And so I'm wondering if hearing these voices long silenced might be an excellent Lenten practice for us as Christians. I know that on my list, it's one of, it's one of my um, Lenten practices, and so I uh, you know, offer it to you. I've got uh, Henry Louis Gates' PBS special on the Black Church. I'm hosting um, this book discussion on, on the book Cast by Isabel Wilkerson, who is uh, it's a very challenging book, and as was her um, The Warmth of Other Sons, which caused me great discomfort. I did not like reading the book. And, um, and another one of the books on my list that's certainly going to make me uncomfortable during Lent is I'm going to read James, Co James Cone's The Cross and the Lynching Tree, and I'll, I'll be probably offering a book group on that if you'd like to come. But what James Cone is doing is he's picking up on the liberation theology that was developed in Latin America during the 60s as kind of a moral reaction to the poverty and the social injustice. It's where we get this expression, the preferential option for the poor. That's basically a way to say that God, the God of justice sides with the oppressed. And um, it causes people in power, <laughs> a lot of discomfort to think about that. But James Cohn has developed a black theology of liberation, which really criticizes white theology and white society. And sometimes I say to myself, you know, I'm not sure I'm going to pick up this cross because it can make me very uncomfortable. But I think that's what part of what Jesus is trying to tell us, that his way, this way, that he's offering to us this way to save our life by losing our life 
for the sake of Jesus and his gospel is going to is going to mean that we're going to suffer in different ways and that we're going to need to let the suffering of others impact us and that maybe that's one way of losing our life and as the confession states we can only do it with the spirit's help we can only hear voices long silence lamenting suffering if we have the spirit's help um, there's a Presbyterian minister that I've read, uh, Mary Ann uh, Dana, and she says, every Christian sanctuary has Jesus' cross as the focal point, but all our own crosses are nowhere symbolized. And she goes on to say, if we're honest, many of us really don't want this kind of saving that Jesus is talking about. She says, we'd like to continue living as we currently do, just happier. More faithfully would be fine so long as we stay comfortable we'd rather not be transformed but we're willing to be improved we're not sure about being saved but enhanced yes please <laughs> this just makes me laugh because we can work on happiness and control and improvement but we cannot save ourselves and this is what jesus is talking about he says indeed what can they give in return for their life and the answer is, there is nothing humanly possible we can give. It reminds me of one of my favorite uh, Southern writers, Flannery O'Connor, wrote, All human nature vigorously resists grace because grace changes us. And the change is painful. It causes suffering. But the only way is God's grace. So we have to take up the cross of Jesus Christ, which is the cross of suffering. We have to admit that our sin convicts us as the guiltiest of criminals in God's perspective. We have to deny ourselves and lose our lives and trade in all these personal crosses that we would rather carry for the cross of Christ. And the record of scripture is that most humans really don't want to do this because they find it too painful. But for us, we have a Lenten season. Maybe this is why the Lenten season has endured for so long in the Christian tradition. This is the season in which we practice denying ourselves. We give up what we usually like to do for a season. We practice following Jesus by studying the Bible, by praying, by doing acts of service. And a good question for Lent, for us, is whose cross will Christ help us carry? Because I don't think he's going to necessarily help us carry all these little crosses that we want to carry. All these things we think are our cross to bear. Jesus will help us carry his cross when it becomes our cross. And Lent is a good time to practice picking this cross up again and again if you don't get anything else out of the season of Lent I hope that this will be one story you will carry with you and memorize and ponder and pray over because I call this the underlined bolded red letter words of Jesus he said he's recorded as saying it at least twice in all three Gospels that's unheard of so these are, these are powerful and important words for us to attend to and to, to, to try and understand and try and live out. In Luke, it's the only gospel where Jesus continues and this is what he says. For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? Jesus had the grace of God to, to help him complete his project of salvation. That was enough for Jesus. Lent is a good time for us to ponder and pray. Is it enough for us? So God of grace, help us to wrestle with these hard words this difficult command, this way of salvation. Be with us as we struggle 
with the call to suffer. Amen. We're now going to have our offering, and the music for our offering is um, a wonderful hymn we've heard many times, Go Down Moses. Today, as you listen to it, and as you offer your, your, your tithes, your gifts, and your offerings, and your very self, all that you have to God, remember that some version of this song was sung by African Americans before the Civil War. And so listen for the voices long silenced, crying out for liberation. <laughs> 